everybody, and welcome to the Rare Book Cafe, the Coffee Break Edition, the book lovers' rendezvous. And this week we are rendezvousing with Bill Wolf from Seattle, Washington, the chairman, the co-producer, the janitor of the Seattle Book Fair coming up in October. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Ed. And of course, my whole co-host, we win. We, I heard you had the vid. How are you? Uh, yeah, well, I, my son, you know, went to Dragon Con in Atlanta. He's here visiting from Montana, and he came home with COVID, which I promptly caught for him. I've avoided it for three and a half years. So it's mostly cold symptoms and fatigue. So, you know, we'll, we'll be okay, but uh, it's kind of put a cramp in things for the last week. Yeah. It really has. All right, well, get healthy, stay safe, stay yeah. quarantined, and uh, get get ready for the Boston show you got coming up. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to, to San Antonio. I mean, San, where am I going? St. Augustine. Uh -huh. for Larry Baker's reading uh, exactly. in two weeks. So well, I hope you guys get a show out of that. Bill, it's probably, what, 10 o'clock in the morning where you are? Yeah. And you, prob time. you probably have reason to have a coffee. It's uh, 7 o'clock at night where I am. And I'm having an aperitivo. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Yes, I have I have water. They told me to drink a gallon a day. And look what else they bring you free. They bring you chips and little sandwiches. Wow. Nice. Isn't that nice? If you hear me munching, you'll know what that is. Bill, the Seattle yes. Book Fair, October fourteenth, fifteenth. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. How is the health of the book business in Seattle? Uh, You've been there for how long? Have you been 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 a part of it. I so I, I moved here in 2015 and and was into books pretty early on. I I, uh, I came here as a professional poker player. So so I but, but I had been in the trade and and then I met Lewis Collins and got uh, um, it, it, it was a few years. But then I, I got into the trade through him, book fair first and then Collins books. So that all started about 12 years ago. So. Come on, you can't leave that dangling parsable of a professional <laughs> poker player. So elaborate yeah. on it in a couple of words, more please. Uh, I mean, I you know, originally I would travel around to tournaments, uh, mostly on the East Coast. So from Foxwoods in Connecticut down to um, uh, Tunica, Mississippi, would have big events. And um, yeah, I, I just I'd uh, put money together. Um, uh, and then everything went online, so uh, it, it really got uh, okay. good for those initial years uh, playing poker online. So, but then I had a I had a daughter and and had to have a more respectable job. So that's what brought me back into books. And well, and, now I'm here to stay. In any given short run, you'll lose just as much money selling books as you would poker. <laughs> that's right. It's possible for sure. Yeah. Do you have a back room set up at the book at the book fair so you can play? No, I don't. No. I don't play very much anymore. That's yeah. So it's all books all the time now. So, oh, do you have any events at the fair? Do you have any speakers? Do you have any awards or give given away? Tell, tell us what's going on uh, behind the show. Uh, so we're we we are working uh, uh, to bring in a presenter. Uh, uh, um, he's got he's a local collector. He's got uh, a world renowned collection of books on uh, um, deception and con games. It's really interesting. I I got a sneak peek of it in, at the Portland Fair. Uh, He's he's a he's a an, at least an acquaintance of mine. I'd say, I'd say perhaps a friend by now. So we're working out some details to get him to uh, to uh, give a little give a little speech and present his material at the fair too. So has he ever been convicted? I, ooh, good question. Uh, we need him on here next time so he can answer all these hard hitting questions. How many booths you have so far? I know you're coming down to the, uh, close to the end of the registration, but where are you number wise? Yeah, so we're yeah we're about a month out. We've got about uh, I'd say there was a there was a flurry uh, early this week, so I'd say we're up to a little over seventy right now. Booths filled, uh, or no, actually exhibitors more more booths filled, but about seventy exhibitors right now. So, uh, and lady, do you know what the number is up there in Boston? So you're um, the uh, show that, you're going to be in. Well, I'm in the Shadow Show, and I think it's going to be around forty. Is what Richard had said. But I think we're having Richard on later today, so we might can find out. Um, I do have one question for Bill. Um, in the past, I know, say like the Florida Show, you know, we're encouraged to sign up before we leave the last day of the show, mm -hmm. and then everything's due in months before the show opens. 
are you finding that people are delaying making decisions about shows more since the pandemic? Um, you know, I, I'm, when I make a hotel reservation, I want to be sure I can cancel it, you know, things like that. Right, and right. I just wondered if that had affected the registration process for book fairs. I mean, I, I'd say that there are probably more people on the fence right now a month out than usual, but I, and historically we had, we had taken even deposits that the day people were leaving from the previous year's fair, I, I eliminated that years ago. So I, I really don't put too much pressure on people until, uh, I don't know, I'd say summertime for our, our October event. Um, so, and certainly, you know, when we do get cancellations, if it's more than 30 days out, I don't, you know, it's full refund and if money has had been transacted. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're just, um, we're not aggressive in getting people to commit early on in the season. So, Bill, uh, I've done the Seattle show three times and I'll tell you what, uh, people listening who don't, aren't dealers may not realize the real action comes after the show. I have found some of the greatest collections, people walking up to me. I have found, um, uh, some of the more long-time customers, people that come back to the show every single year. I know what they collect. I look for it. I bring them to the show uh, for those people specifically. Uh, how do you see the the equation of the, the values of, of doing the show on the front end versus what you get in the back end? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's often kind of a mischaracterization for people to assume that or, or for to expect that uh, it's all about the bottom line only on that weekend. I mean, you are meeting people. You are, you know, we, at least here, we have a, um, a mailing list that goes back uh, 25 years, I'd say. Uh, lots of librarians, lots of, lots of you know, uh, serious local collectors and people that fly here from elsewhere religiously every single year. So to have to put your, your business and your material in front of these people, um, uh, you know, it's not just about what you've got in that booth that weekend and how well you do. It's it's making these contacts. It's it's setting up future business, uh, both buying and selling, as you point out. So it's it's a it's a valuable thing to just kind of be a part of the show. Uh, Bill, that was, the backdrop you know, of uh, books behind you uh, is that your bookstore? Do you have an open shop? And related to that, how much time does this uh, you know do you have to put into this throughout the year? How many? Hundreds of hours, would you, would you say? Yeah. Uh, and, well, and, uh, I put shop there. Yeah, I put zero time in what this looks like behind me. I know people in the COVID era have erected these great, fantastic. I, I, I don't do a whole lot of this Zoom stuff, but, uh, but yeah, this is Collins Books. Um, uh, Lewis, my old friend and mentor, passed away in 2018, so uh, I've been uh, running his shop since. Um, we are extremely busy here, extremely inundated with books, uh, good books. It's been fun. It's it's uh, stressful. Yeah, as far as hours go, I mean, if I'm, uh, it's pretty simple. If I'm in town, I work every day and I put in about 60 hours a week. Uh, the book fair is it's definitely an all year gig too. Although obviously early in the early in the year, it's it's just light activities here and there. But now especially, it's I'm adding to my workload with uh, making sure this is all pulled off in a month. So. Uh, but yeah, all fun stuff. Uh, like I said before, all books all the time. That's uh, what I've signed up for. So good. We before I forget, uh, I saw the show that you did about your book club. I was, I'm so glad that I wasn't there. It was so much better without me. Oh, well, no, it wasn't better without you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be doing that again a uh, week after next. Uh, the other half of the book club will be theirs. What we did, Bill, was members of my book club talked about a book that was an influence on them when they were younger and the average age of my book club is late 70s so we're talking going way back and some of us did children's books and some of us did you know like teenage books and things like that and so then i reported on the books that the book club members had had chosen and we we got half of them done at the august meeting and we'll do the other half uh, another six at the September meeting, but it was really interesting, uh, and and we did it without Ed. You know that's really hard to do this without Ed. <laughs> yeah, We're, I'm curious yeah, if they have to read a book before you can participate in a book club. That's right. right. You do. You do. It's hard to find the time sometimes, right? To sit down, actually. Yeah. What do you read or what do you collect? 
I, I collect, uh, I mean, I've got a little bit of everything at home, but I, I, I like mostly uh, to, to collect and look at and see uh, human rights, civil rights, um, history of the oppressed peoples of the world, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of, uh, a lot of politics and economics, uh, but I also have a lot of art books, um, a lot of books on books particularly, so yeah, a little bit of everything, like most people. Bill, we forgot to tell everybody where this is going on October 14th and 15th at the Seattle... Seattle Center's Exhibition Hall. Yeah. On, where, where it's been held for the last, what, 18, 20 years? Uh, as long as I remember, yeah. Uh, it's It's been, uh, yeah, it's, it's right on Mercer there. Uh, it's underneath the um, uh, the ballet is, is, uh, has, has a venue there. It's a, and, and particularly with the revamping of Key Arena, uh, they, they, they just... Uh, they just um, renovated our big uh, basketball arena. Uh, used to be basketball, now it's hockey. But the whole area has been, not that it even needed it really, but it's been revitalized, it's really busy. Uh, it's a great place to be. Lots of Good. lots of people bustling about, so. Hey, say hello to all my friends from the Cascade Books Open Association, who I know are well represented at For your sure. table. Yeah. Lee, why don't you uh, wrap us up here? What, you got anything else we're gonna do, do oh. some magic with? Uh, well, I don't know. I sold a copy um, to a friend whose sons collect a lot of science fiction and uh, assorted things. And it's an old beat-up magazine that has a story by Lovecraft in it. And, um, and it's not in very good shape. And so she also likes for me to wrap these things and ship them to her children. So full service. You know, we have a full service bookstore here. Nothing and, better than getting a book wrapped in paper. Right. But she said he wanted it framed. And I said, well, it's just a magazine. You know, why would he want it framed? It would have to be in a shadow box. And she said, because he says he's memorized the, the story. And he just wants the copy of it framed to put on his bookshelf. So yesterday I framed... Uh, I'll show it to you. There it is. Oh, wow. There that's gorgeous. That's, so that's what he's... Well, it's probably a good idea because it's not in very good shape. Very fragile paper. You know, not little chips coming off, but that's... Uh, oh, that's the magic of book collecting, what, what if folks. His, one of his Christmas presents. He knows he's getting it, but it's one of his Christmas presents. All right. Thank you again, Bill. <laughs> The Rare Book Cafe. Tell your friends about us. Drink a cup of coffee. We will see you next week. See you will. All right. Thanks, Ed. Take care over there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.